first of all, I just wanted to say thank you very much for inviting Longcare Care Legends TV to your uh, premises and factory here and for the hospitality that you're showing to our members tomorrow. Um, to start with, uh, could you give us a bit of an introduction as to who you are for our viewers? Yes, yeah, certainly. My name is Darren Spencer, so I'm the Vice President for Aaron's Company for Europe, Middle East, Asia and Africa. As part of that role, effectively Managing Director for Aaron's in the UK in this manufacturing facility. And thank you also, actually, for coming along and visiting us and bringing some of your members along. We, we're very proud of what we do here. We're a manufacturing business, and uh, I think many are often surprised just how vertically integrated we are. We bring in sheet steel, bar, tube, uh, we, we bend it, we weld it, we cut it, we paint, paint it, we assemble it, and we're really proud of that. So any opportunity to show that off, we love to do. So can you give us a bit of the history of errands in the UK? Certainly, yes. So this company we sit in today uh, was formerly called Countax Limited. So that history started with Countax was formed in 1983 and primarily as a manufacturer of accessories for garden tractors actually. And then in 1991 the first Countax tractor was manufactured. Um, then in 1998 we became distributors for the Echo Power Tool business. So that's a relationship that's now 22 years strong, a product we're very passionate about. And then in 2000 we actually acquired the intellectual property for a brand called Westwood a well-known UK brand of garden tractor. I think many thought that we would probably discontinue that brand, but uh, we invested in it actually because we saw a lot of value in that brand and we continue to do so today. The former Countax company really had kind of reached the end of its uh, small niche player sort of road and really needed to become part of something bigger. And the Aaron's company was a perfect synergy for us. The Aaron's company was formed in 1933. Um, it's a privately held business, it's a family owned business, sixth generation, and uh, we actually have uh, four members of the Aaron's family working in the company today, one of those here in the UK. And we're a company, we're an engineering company. We're a vertically integrated manufacturing company. We have an ethos of continuous improvement in everything we do, and we're passionate about the products we make. So for Countax, it was a, it was a seamless transition to the Aaron's company and a very good fit and really has laid the foundations to where we are today and the, the great products we make today. So it's fair to say that you're very open-minded and always looking ahead. So what can we expect to see in the factory today? So uh, what you'll see in the factory today is um, we've been through a fairly significant step change in the last 12 months. This factory has been here since 1983 and until, until very recently really we were a garden tractor manufacturer. So what you, you would have always seen is we are highly vertically integrated as I mentioned earlier. We bring in raw materials and we send out a uh, finished product at the other end of the factory and that's probably the single thing I'm most proud about what we do. We have that control to everything in house. But we've also made some big investment in this plant in the last year. We've witnessed that in the last uh, three years, zero turn mowers across Europe have been the third fastest growing category in Lord and Garden. Uh, we've had some great success with it and we believe in the concept. So we've actually invested um, big six figure, uh, six figure sums in the last uh, 12 months to actually adapt this factory to be able to manufacture zero turn as well. Our first UK manufactured zero turn rolled off the line in December and uh, we have some other platforms that will be coming online in the next six weeks so uh, it's come on board very quickly and on time and uh, the order book's filling up so you're going to see a busy factory, a lot of products being manufactured but I think uh, the thing that we're most proud of is the fact that we are truly a manufacturer. We're not an assembler of components. We have that ability to engineer. We have that ability to continually develop. We have that control within this facility. And uh, I think you'll enjoy seeing that today. Excellent. You guys are innovators here. What are you looking to do going forward into the future? Can we expect anything exciting to see? It's a great question. Um, I mentioned we're an engineering company and uh, a product we're launching just later this year, probably around September time, is our own lithium ion powered commercial zero turn. Um, our EVZT. And that's a project we've been working on for about three years now. And when we started that, we went out to the component suppliers that were available. There were off-the-shelf transmissions, off-the-shelf battery packs, 
and they really didn't offer the performance that we felt we wanted from a commercial product. So we went a different route. We actually partnered with a battery company and we've designed our own battery system that will be patented to the Aaron's company. It's a cassette system. So one of the benefits for that is with four batteries within the product, it can be running on two. My two are back in the van charging. Um, spare battery packs can be purchased as well. Those batteries in the future will also be able to be used in other products that we bring to market. And some of the benefits of that, because we've also developed our own motors as well, is the runtime we're getting out of our product is going to be very strong. Uh, we believe that we are going to have five to six hours of cutting um, and actually 15 acres will be kind of a cut area. You can get out of a single charge of the product. And this is a product that we launched at Louisville in 2019 and really caused a stir because it's, it's unique. It's going to have patented technology. Um, it's really hitting a sweet spot where many cities across Europe are already banning the purchase of gas-powered products. And there's not many products out there, certainly not giving the performance that commercial users require. So this is going to be a very important product for us. And really an example of sometimes we'll innovate and take our own view on what a product might look like. And uh, ours will look a little bit different to what else is out there. What goes into your consideration of parts and components and why did you choose Kawasaki engines for, the, for your machines? So when we choose components for our products, um, probably no surprise to hear it's about quality. I mean any product that we manufacture today um, will go through uh, times two life cycle testing. We have a 24-7 testing facility in Florida. Uh, where all our products even manufactured in this product in this facility here go to. And uh, if we expect the life cycle on a product to be a thousand hours, then we're going to run it to 2,000 hours. And if a component cannot um, really meet those standards, then it doesn't go into our product. Um, if I look at as an example Kawasaki, I mean, we've been working with Kawasaki for I think about 15 years now. And um, I often say our customers will be the people who tell us whether our products are good. And the feedback we've always had with Kawasaki is fantastic. The products are reliable, they're powerful, support is excellent. We've had many opportunities to actually go in other directions. And uh, I can say it's probably one of the relationships we value the most um, due to the quality of that product and the support of the company, actually. So there's a lot that you've done over the years. Uh, it's been pretty impressive to see. Uh, you've got a lot of innovation and progress always looking forward with the company. And it's fair to say that as a company you've got passion for equipment. So that's led you to having some fun along the way. And can you tell us a little bit about the Running Blade project that you guys got involved with? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was a really fun project. And you know, that's nearly 10 years ago now that we actually did that. And we were approached, uh, we were approached by um, people who'd been involved in some of the land speed records in the UK. And um, Don Wales was the chap who was driving the vehicle. He was uh, a relative of Sir, Mal Sir Malcolm Campbell. And I think he subsequently has broken other world records with JCB, the world's fastest diesel. And we learned of this world record we didn't know anything about, the world's fastest lawnmower. And um, it kind of um, tweaked some interest for us. I mean, some might think it was really um, a marketing um, exercise, but it really wasn't. It was an exercise that was born out of the passion of our engineers. I can tell you that that product, or it wasn't a product, but uh, that uh, concept, the running blade, was made by our, our engineers in their spare time. They'd work evenings, they would work weekends. It really was a labour of love. And, uh, and we saw that passion and we saw that kind of will. So we started to put some backing behind it and give them some resources. And Kawasaki actually was our engine partner for that project really helped us a lot and it was a lot of fun I mean I, I think we never foresaw the amount of coverage it would have and you know in many countries around the world I travel to today it's often something that's brought up so we had a lot of fun with that I think uh, the world record we set was a little over 87 miles per hour uh, we actually had the thing going more than 100 miles per hour it was a little bit dicey at that speed and um, it was it was a lot of fun and i think actually it created a lot of passion in the business and our our customers really engaged with it as well so what have you guys got planned for the long care legend members that are attending tomorrow so for us whenever we have the opportunity to get in front of users 
it's actually a two-sided exercise for us. It's a fantastic opportunity to actually get feedback. I've talked a lot about the fact being a manufacturer, we have that ability to adapt. So we'll take every opportunity to get users into the seat of our product. Uh, we'll give them a tour of the facility, but we've also lined up some other exercises that we hope will be useful to them. Kawasaki are going to be supporting some training around uh, product maintenance and engine maintenance that we really hope will just be of assistance to them. We're also going to give some maintenance training on our own products as well, which will be really tips that don't just support our products, anything anything that professional uses. And then really get the operators to use the products, sit in the seat of our seated products, pick up our handheld Echo products, and uh, really experience what we think we know and we're passionate about is that we have some great products that uh, really gave, give great performance. But as I mentioned earlier, um, I often say to our dealers, I'm not going to say that we have great products. Um, you'll tell me whether they're good or not. So we look forward to that feedback. So our collaboration today and tomorrow is due to what's really happening because of social media. Um, in your opinion, what are your thoughts about how social media is contributing to the industry? Uh, is it creating an opportunity for a stronger industry from end user to dealer to manufacturer? I think it certainly is. I mean, social media... Um, it's not, not a huge statement for me to say in every industry is having a huge influence. We as consumers and myself in my own personal life, we have access to information that we never had before. Um, access from manufacturers, but also I myself use consumer reviews quite a lot when I'm making a purchasing decision. So really, I think the consumer arrives at the purchase points far more educated. But also there's that power of the consumer voice and I mentioned earlier that I often say that I don't try to, or attempt to tell a customer we have a good product so I say the customer is going to tell me and we're kind of okay with that as a company because we're passionate about our products we believe in our products and we believe they're going to stand the test of time and, and performance so we're very happy to put ourselves out there and actually let consumers tell us what they think of our products it's the right way it's educating the consumer I think it's going to be the biggest influencer in the products that we make in the future because we too as a manufacturer have so much more access to information of what users actually want from our products rather than what we think. So thank you very much for taking the time to do the interview with us. We're very much looking forward to tomorrow and the events with the members and getting hands on with the machines and uh, just keep your eye out for the video on social media then. And thank you as well. Um, we. We greatly appreciate you taking the time and your members to come and visit us. We, we love what we do here and our doors are always open and we always actually enjoy hosting and showing what we do. So thank you for taking the time to come and spend with us. We really appreciate it.